Hi, welcome to Harvard Applied Math 205, a graduate course in scientific computing and numerical methods. In this video, we're going to look at semi-discretizations for partial differential equations. And we'll also briefly look at some methods we can use for solving the wave equation, another example of a hyperbolic partial differential equation. So far, we've developed full discretizations in both space and time of the linear advection equation, and we've considered accuracy and stability. However, sometimes it can be helpful to consider semi-discretizations where we discretize only in space or only in time. And as an example, let's look at discretizing the equation ut plus c of t and x, ux equals zero, in space using a backward difference formula. And that will give us duj by dt plus cj of t times ujt minus uj minus 1 of t divided by delta x is equal to 0. And that will be true for j equal 1 to n. And here, uj of t represents our solution to our PDE at position xj, and cj of t represents our function c at t and xj. And this gives us now a system of ODEs that we could write as u subscript t is equal to f of t and u of t, where now u of t is an n-dimensional function of time. And f here would be given by minus cjt times ujt minus uj minus 1 of t divided by delta x, and that would be the jth component of this function. And we could now approximate this ODE system using a forward Euler discretization in time, and that would actually recover our upwind scheme. Alternatively, we could use a backward Euler discretization, and that would give us a slightly different discretization approach. However, an alternative approach would just be to use a black box ODE solver, such as ODE45 in MATLAB, to just solve the system of ODEs. And this black box approach is referred to as the method of lines. And the name lines here is because we're solving for each uj of t to find our solution at xj. So if we look at the xt plane, then we're solving for our solution along a set of lines. And this approach can sometimes be very useful. And it can allow us to take advantage of features of our black box ODE solver. For example, some ODE solvers have adaptive time stepping that can automatically reach a certain level of accuracy. And so if we plug our semi-discretization into our black box solver, then we'll be able to make use of these features of our solver. So we'll now take a look at a Python example, m underscore of underscore lines dot pi, that can demonstrate this approach. Let's now look at the program m of lines dot pi that could demonstrate the method of lines applied to the linear advection equation ut plus cux equals zero. And we're going to solve this equation over the periodic interval from zero to one, and we'll make use of initial condition that's a Gaussian centered at x equal a half. And in this program, we'll first define that we're using m equals 64 grid points, and we want 40 snapshots of our solution. And in the method of lines, we convert our PDE into a system of ODEs at each of our spatial grid points. And to solve this ODE system, we're going to make use of the ODE int routine within the scipy to integrate module. And we therefore have to define a function deriv here that can evaluate the right-hand side of our ODE system resulting from this semi-discretization in space. And as described in the slides, at a grid point j, the change in the solution will be minus c divided by dx times uj minus uj minus 1. 
So we have this constant here that gives us the c divided by dx. And then we have the input vector u that will give us our uj terms. And to get our uj minus 1 terms, we make use of the numpy.roll function that can return back a shifted copy of a vector. And this will also take into account the periodic boundary condition. We'll then define some PDE-related constants. We'll define our speed c to be 0.1, our grid spacing dx, and our constant c divided by dx that appears in our derivative function. And we'll then define dt to be 0.1 to be the interval between output snapshots that we want. We'll then define our Gaussian initial condition, and we'll then define the times at which we want snapshots of our solution. And we'll make use of the lin space function to get equally spaced times with a time interval dt between them. We'll then call the ODE int routine to integrate the ODE system. And we'll pass in the right hand side of the ODE system, deriv, our initial condition, u init, and also then the times that we want output. And internally, ODE int makes use of the ODE pack Fortran library and generally it returns very accurate results. Typically, by default, it uses tolerances of around 10 to the minus 8 in the solution and uses an adaptive time stepping procedure to reach that tolerance. And it's worth noting that internally, the time steps that ODE int is using have no bearing on the times of actual output of the solutions. And internally, this function may be using much smaller time steps than the output times that are requested. We'll then output the results, and by default, this program will output them to the terminal. So let's now go ahead and run this program. And so by default, we get the output to the terminal. So now let's run this program again and save the results to a temporary file called out.ml. And we'll now plot the results in GNU plot. And we'll first take a look at the initial condition for our PDE problem. So here we see our Gaussian that is centered on x equal a half. So now let's plot all of the snapshots of our solution. And as expected, we see that our Gaussian moves rightward as time increases. And we know that the speed c is equal to 0.1, and the time between snapshots is 0.1, and we have 40 snapshots, and therefore the total time of integration is t equal 4, and we therefore expect that our initial condition should move by 0.4 and indeed that is the case. We see that the Gaussian at the end of the integration is now located at around x equal 0.9. Now one thing that we can notice is that there are actually substantial numerical errors in our solution and we see that over the time of integration, the peak of the Gaussian is damped, and that indicates numerical error. And it's actually rather similar to the first order upwind method that we looked at in previous videos. And it's worth noting that even though we are doing now a very accurate time integration, that still means that there can be large spatial errors present in our solution. So it's actually worth now comparing the results of the method of lines output to our original upwind 
implementation using first order finite differences. So we have the program transp.py that was described in previous videos. And I'm now going to run this program and save the results and we can compare them to the output of the method of lines program. And this program is set up to output the exact same set of 40 snapshots of our solution at the exact same time points. So let me now overlay the output of the first order finite difference scheme. So the results of the first order finite difference scheme are shown in blue and we actually see in this case that there is little difference in accuracy between the first order finite difference scheme and the method of lines. And in this case our errors are being dominated by the spatial errors in our discretization and therefore even though the method of lines is doing a more accurate temporal integration the overall error in our solutions are actually similar between the two approaches. If we were to improve the spatial accuracy of our discretization then it's likely that the method of line solution would become substantially more accurate than our finite difference solution that makes use of first order forward Euler time stepping. We'll now briefly return to the wave equation, utt minus c squared uxx equals zero. And this can model many real phenomena. For example, in one dimension, it can model vibrations on a taut spring. If we generalize it to several dimensions, then it can model the propagation of sound waves. Many schemes have been proposed to solve the wave equation, and one good option is to use central difference approximations for both UTT and UXX. And that gives us a scheme UN plus 1J minus 2UNJ plus UN minus 1J over delta T squared minus C squared UNJ plus 1 minus 2UNJ plus UNJ minus 1 over delta X squared is equal to zero. And if we perform a truncation error analysis on this scheme, we find it's second order accurate. If we perform a Fourier stability analysis, we find that the CFL number, C delta T divided by delta X, has to be less than or equal to one. And we can also note that this is a two-step method in time. To find UN plus one, we require UN and also UN minus one. And therefore, in practice, we would typically need a one-step method in order to take the first step in our numerical solution to get started in a similar way as we looked at for multi-step ODE integration methods.